Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about vertical stick welds and I'm gonna show you not one, but four different techniques that you can use to be successful stick welding in the vertical position, which is when your joint is sitting up and down like this. Now, it can be a little more difficult. This is one of the more challenging welding positions to work in. So I'm gonna show you four options and for each of those, I'll show you what type and size of electrode I use, what settings I had on my machine, I'll show you the rod angle as well as some footage of how to actually perform the weld so you can go out and duplicate it yourself. Let's get started. Okay, let's take a minute to talk about body positioning. So I'm here, this is where I have my sample set up to run today and it's really important to be very mindful of how you're positioning yourself and make yourself as comfortable as possible when you're running vertical welds because you have to have really good control of the electrode and you can't drag it along kind of like you can on a bench and there's not a natural way to prop up. So there's really two options. One is to find something to prop on and that's really helpful. So that's what this clamp is here. This is just a, an F-style clamp from Harbor Freight. It's actually one of the best welding accessories they have there. I have this clamp right onto the stand that I'm using and then I can use that to steady myself and so I'm just putting my left hand here sitting on the clamp and then using that as a bridge over to my right hand and that lets me get in here and maintain good control, right? So as I go up, I can just slide along there and I don't really get hung up on anything, right? So I'm coming in right there and moving in. Now, you can't always put something to prop on uh, on the piece that you're working on, right? Some, some things you can, some things you can't. So if you just can't do that, the other option uh, is to really limit the amount of joints that have motion and the best way that I've found to do that and a lot of people do this uh, uh, technique is you'll take your elbow and tuck it in tight to your body that way you're taking these joints all out of the equation and you're really just limiting the amount of movement you have and then to limit how much your body can move around you can use your other hand to kind of brace yourself and then lean in here and I'll actually lean my whole body in as I weld Right now my feet are a little too far back, that's why a dry run is a good idea. Now I'll get in here and I can just weld right along and that goes pretty well. Okay, so the first few welds we're going to run will be run with 7018 electrodes and I'm going to use 1 8 inch electrodes as well as one run with a 3 32nd inch electrode. Now as far as the rod angle goes, I'm going to be going more or less straight in and out with a slight upward push angle on these first welds. So the first one is a vertical stringer and you can see I've struck an arc here with some 1 8 inch or 3.2 millimeter 7018 electrodes running 100 amps and I'm just doing my best to maintain a nice consistent travel speed and keep a short arc all the way up uh, until I get to the top of this joint. And the main thing to keep an eye on here is your weld pool just to make sure that it's bridging both sides and staying nice and consistent at the width that you want. So I'll just follow this all the way up here, uh, clear up to the top. And then notice here as I get to the top, what I'm going to do is just roll my weld right over the top here to finish. And so I'll finish off just like that and the slag always bubbles up on top or there in the center, um, but once you clear it off, there's a pretty uh, pretty good consistent smooth weld. A little bit of a wire brush and you notice I've got an overall good weld. There's a little low spot, a little high spot, but not too bad uh, as a whole. Now I'm going to run one more of these vertical stringers and this time I'm running a smaller electrode. This is a 3 seconds or 2.4 millimeter electrode and I'm running it on thinner plate. This is 1 8 inch thick plate or around 3 millimeter thick plate. And when you have that thinner plate, sometimes you need to keep a smaller fillet weld, or if you need a smaller weld in general, uh, one of the good options to do that is just running a smaller rod. And as I'm welding up here, I'm really doing the exact same thing as before, just working my way up this plate. And when you're welding up, it's important to make sure that you watch that weld pool and keep an eye on the edges of it to make sure that molten metal fills in all of the places that were burned away so that you don't have a low spot right next to your weld. And that low spot would be called undercut and that can uh, make your, your welds uh, more likely to break if they're loaded on and off repeatedly uh, in a cyclic loading. So here I'll chip some of that slag off and brush it and you can see not too bad of a result. It's a, a, a thinner plate and smaller weld than before 
but overall the same technique. Now for the next uh, next technique, we're gonna make a uh, another pass over this first weld that we did, and you can see I'm just moving my electrode back and forth over to those corners and pausing on the edges. So I'll show you how this is done here. So I struck my arc up higher on the weld, so I'll weld right over top the arc strike marks that I make there. And I'm just moving from side to side and keeping that arc nice and short. And I don't have to spend very much time in the center of the weld um, because that will get filled in as I move to the side. So if I did move, you know, in a, a fairly even fashion, slowly across the center, what would happen is my weld would be built up a lot in the middle and wouldn't fill on the side. So I'm just doing my best to move as consistently as possible uh, and move up the same amount on each step, like I'm climbing a ladder here. And it's not going perfectly, but overall pretty well. And so I'll watch that fill in and just work my way up and I'm going to have a nice uh, large size weld here. So if you're welding thicker plate and you need to have a wider weld, this is a technique that you can use to do that. The other option, and sometimes this is a requirement on code welding, but uh, either way, another option is to run more of the stringers like that first one. So you can run one and then typically you can put two more over top of it and that will work out about right uh, overlapping there and so you can uh, make a larger weld like that but but this weave technique is really nice where you're able to use it I'll go ahead and chip off some of the slag here um, I'm noticing here on these Hobart rods it's a little bit more stubborn than some of the rods that I've run in the past but uh, either way we'll get that chipped off for the most part and wire brush here there's a little bit of slag left on the corners but uh, you can see the idea that we have a nice large weld. There's a little bit of a low spot there, but uh, overall, pretty pretty even, uh, lar larger size weld. Now I'll just show you one more of those uh, using that same technique, but this time I'm going to be running uphill uh, with that same size electrode, but I'm not weaving out as far. I'm staying in a little bit tighter and moving a little faster as I go up and this is going to give me a little bit smaller uh, weld so you can control your weld size here by varying your technique to uh, move out more or less distance so you can see I'm making my way up the weld quite a bit faster because I don't need as much time to fill in so you can see the molten metal uh, will fill out and as soon as it gets almost over to the other side then I'm moving over and just climbing up the ladder like this as I watch that weld pool fill up just like it's filling a glass of water and I get up here to the top and I'll go right over the top again and chip some of that slag away and you can see I have a nice result here this one's a little bit more consistent even I'll go ahead and brush that off and we can take a look here and that gives you a good uh, size fillet weld, which is probably too thick for that thickness of plate, but you could use it on, on thicker plate too. Now I'm moving to some 6011 electrodes for these last two techniques. And you can see I struck my arc up higher on the weld again there, and then I'm uh, welding. And here with 6011 and 6010 is similar. I'm running a lower amperage uh, of 80 amps with this rod, which you'll typically run a lower lower amperage with 6010 or 6011. And, and these rods freeze really fast. And so what you can do, they, they also cut really deep, so you can fill your weld pool in, and then you'll move up a bit past where you want to build your next uh, section of weld and then back into it. And this is called a whip and pause type technique. And what I do is I just watch for the weld to fill out to the fillet size that I want. Once it's filled out to that, then I'll move up past where I'm going to weld next and then back into it. Um, so I give just a minute for that weld to, to cool off, or not a minute, just a, a moment there uh, for the weld to cool off. And then I'm back in it and working my way up like this. And so after we finish, you'll notice this has a more rippled appearance uh, than the other, but it can be a little bit more flexible in terms of what you can do. It's also a good rod to, to get familiar with running because if you're running an open route uh, on a butt joint then you'll use this to, to penetrate through it's a really good option for that so so learning to run it here on a fillet weld is helpful you can see it does have that rippled appearance but uh, overall you can keep a fairly consistent bead uh, going uphill here with 6011. 
Now we're going to reverse course for the last technique, and so we're going to be moving downhill uh, for this one with a 1 8 inch 60 11 rod again. And in order to do this, you notice that steep rod angle. I'm going to be maintaining a steep rod angle to push that slag back behind me. So this is um, different from the other three in those two regards, both the direction of travel and the rod angle. So again, I'm running 80 amps here with a 1 8 inch or 3.2 millimeter 6011. And this time, instead of running on some 3 16 or 5 millimeter thick plate, I'm actually running on some 3 millimeter or 1 8 inch thick plate. And that's a good time to use a downhill technique like this is when you're running on that thinner material there. Um, because you are moving faster and will typically uh, get a little bit less penetration maybe on some thicker plates. So a uh, thinner plate's a good way to go. And you can see I'm just following down, trying to stay right on that leading edge of a puddle and maintain a really short arc as I work my way down. So so this is the, the last technique that uh, I'll show you. You can use um, this one as well as that 6011 technique in conjunction with the 7018 techniques that I, I showed for the first two um, to make a larger weld as well. So, so there are options there and that's not too bad, but uh, brushing some of that slag off, it came out pretty well, a pretty good consistent bead there. Hey, well thanks for tuning in today. If you liked this video, let me know by clicking that thumbs up below. And if you want to learn more about the basic fundamentals of stick welding, check out the other videos I've linked in the description and click that subscribe button so I'll send more videos your way to help you continue to learn uh, welding and fabrication. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.